Hey everyone, Darwin here. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with GitLab, and I wanted to talk to you today about an important problem that we have in building containers in CI. Mainly that problem has to do with the original Docker in Docker implementation requiring elevated permissions on the host where that Docker daemon is running. And so we're gonna to talk today about a way to do least privileged container builds without that permission using Canico on GitLab. Let's take a look at the original problem. So this problem originates when we have to use uh, Docker in, 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 a, in a special mode. So we'll take a look, a quick look at how it works normally. So normally you build up a Docker host, you're gonna put an operating system on there and load up Docker and turn on its daemon. And then you're gonna put Docker containers on there. Now built into the framework is the ability to block specific types of permissions from the containers. Not all things are blocked, but selectively things that are important that would, be, would compromise a host operating system are blocked. So that's kind of your standard operating mode. Now one of the challenges we run into is when building containers using Docker, we have to enable something called privileged mode. So what this enables is we are able to have uh, full permissions from whatever Docker daemon has on that host, those full permissions are passed through to containers. So if they want to try to access the host, they can access it with whatever permissions the daemon has. And so of course, this is a big problem. You probably run into a lot of uh, guff from your uh, security department, understandably. They're concerned about anything like this. It allows full permissions to the operating system level. And then if you're running this inside of a cloud, you know what permissions does that instance have within that cloud? So this can be a, a pretty big challenge. And one of the ways it has emerged to address this is Canico. Now what Canico allows us to do is keep our standard Docker daemon configuration and still be able to generate containers. And so when we build, do those container builds, we still have the permissions blocking that we're familiar with, with normal Docker daemon processes. So let's take a look at how we do this now in GitLab. This particular repository is available publicly. It's something we call a guided exploration, and it's designed to help you onboard to new concepts or ideas with working examples. If you take a look through the readme, it discusses what GitLab features are needed in order to facilitate this particular pattern. It talks about individual patterns that are necessary in order to do this uh, build. It also helps you understand some things that you may not be able to view in the public view. So you can't see CICD variables in this, this particular repository. So it's telling you here in this table which CICD variables you'll need to create to make the entire pattern work correctly. Um, it also talks a little bit about other cross-references and where to find information and other possible uses of the example. So guided explorations is something you can use and implement. You can go and take a look around at this one and you can also grab a copy into your own group or your own instance. Let's take a look at the YAML file and see exactly what is happening here. Now we do have some extra information in here that just has to do with building containers. So we'll kind of skip over some of that. But first of all, we have the image name right here. And this particular image, uh, as of the recording of this uh, video, the image I had to use is almost the very, very latest. So almost the edge image for debug. We do need to use the debug image so that we get the cli that we needed in order to uh, process the commands. We also override the entry point right here so that we can do our own uh, operations and call Canico directly. Then as we go down to the individual uh, jobs here, we can see a couple uh, interesting things. So the first thing is uh, th this particular container required me to create the uh, Canico folder. Uh, so I, th I don't know that it's completely working properly. That may not be possible or may not be necessary in the future. Um, but the way that I've done it here uh, shouldn't cause you a problem if that uh, folder does indeed exist. Then we have to create our authorizations. And in this case, we're using a base64 encoding so that whatever characters you might have used uh, in the username or the password will uh, translate correctly. And then we call the Canico executor uh, using a command line. Uh, the command line is rather long here. Let's get into edit mode so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so our Canico uh, command line is calling a Docker file with our project directory as our Canico context. And then our destination uh, switch is how we set up tags. And we also have a label uh, uh, switch as well. And we do it for two different examples. So we wanted to do it for GitLab CI, the built-in container registry in GitLab, and then also for Docker Hub. 
And the reason is, is that the authentication within the GitLab CI example is pretty transparent because it's using built-in variables to create that. So these variables here, CI registry user, CI registry password, CI registry, and a GitLab job, those are all automatically set to be the registry and authentication information that's used in order for you to use the built-in uh, container registry right here. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that in a minute, but because of that, it can be kind of confusing then to understand, well, how do I push to a different registry? Maybe I want to push to Docker Hub or an ECR in Amazon. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to use the built-in one or I want to use both. So this build actually does both. And what it does is it's using the concept of an environment in order to allow us to set a different set of variables for this additional build. So I'm going to go into my CI CD uh, settings and we'll take a look at the variables and the fact that they're scoped. So right over here, you can see this list of variables and to the right here, the scope is push to Docker hub. So it's specifically saying these variables only apply when that environment is in play. And so if we go back here, we can see that we have set that environment. So all of those vi variables will be overridden. This is a GitLab CI feature. Uh, it, it wasn't entirely necessary to use that feature, but you can see right here the flexibility that it allows us so that we can have two builds going to two different locations and we don't have to do a lot of messing around with how to do the variables. So because of that, it pulls those CI CD variables uh, from the variable set rather than using the default ones that the above job would do. And then the command line is uh, identical as far as the processing of the additional uh, Docker push. Um, so that's kind of the CI CD variables. Also, there's a couple other little things in here that aren't directly to do with least privileged containers, um, but one of them is creating a bunch of labels that track back to the GitLab CI information. So this creates this variable with all of these label commands. It's then used in both of the Docker uh, push commands. And then also uh, we are doing, uh, we're taking a list of additional tags that you could give us. So if you specify when you push this job, uh, whether you do it through an API call, whether you do it through a schedule, whether you do it through the um, run pipeline, you can give a variable additional tag list and those tags will also be added on to any image. Um, so just a couple little tricks for uh, containers in general. Uh, also, the Canico executor, uh, it does a couple things and it's not apparent exactly what it's doing because you're not using your standard Docker commands. Uh, what the Canico executor is doing is it is pre-authing first. So before it even tries to build the image, it goes and checks if it can get into the registry. Uh, you can't tell if it's successful. It never tells you that it did that. Um, but if it fails, it'll tell you, hey, I couldn't touch your registry. Uh, and then at the end, of course, it actually pushes the image at the end of the build. And the problem I had to solve and why I needed this specific container was I would pass the pre-auth check, but then when I went to do the push, I'd get an authentication error. So if you're getting that specific situation where you pass the pre-auth check, but then you get an authentication error when you try to push the container, it might be due to the version of the Canico container you're actually using. Let's take a look at some of the other files inside of, or just at the Docker uh, file. So the Docker file is super simple. We're just using BusyBox and we're going to just echo to the screen that we built this with Canico. So this also keeps the sample very small as far as hitting the container registries. Uh, so when we build this, let's take a look at the pipelines. Uh, so the last pipeline that ran, passed, build for Docker. We'll just take a quick look at the log. It's not <clears throat> all that exciting, but inside of here, uh, Canico gets executing right here around line 28 and then does the push by the end. And then the same for pushing to GitLab. So it's going to look identical. The only difference is our CI variables that we talked about earlier. In addition, let's take a look at our container registries. So if we go into our container registry right here in GitLab, we can see that we've built the image and it's pushed it with the requested tags. So let's also take a look at the image out on Docker Hub uh, so that you can see that it also built out to uh, this location as well.
So you can use this to build to any container register you want. I have tested it on gitlab.com shared runners as well as on our Kubernetes runner on my own cluster. So those various mechanisms should work just fine. And if you have any problems with it, feel free to reach out on the guided exploration uh, repository with an issue. So uh, there's the guided exploration URL, so you can go out and play with it yourself. You can either look at the results or make a copy of that repository and get playing with it right away. Also, if you need any help figuring out your container build scenarios, I really love my role at GitLab as a solutions architect because we get to help you understand what it is that we can do uh, with the tool to help you meet your objectives, relieve pain points in CI, CD, and any of the other things that GitLab can do for you. So if you'd like to have a solutions architect help you out, feel free to get uh, in touch with us at our sales URL there, and we can get someone to uh, help you out. So thanks a lot. I hope that you're going to be happy that you can go back to your security folks and tell them, na 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 na, we don't need uh, Docker in uh, privileged mode anymore, and uh, we can get out from under that scrutiny, and we can all be more secure. Thanks for your time.